Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be painting a dragonfly, but the thing about this particular dragonfly isn't so much the dragonfly, the, the technique of doing the background to the dragonfly, which is going to be a wet in wet uh, random background, which is easy to do and causes no stress and uh, will create something which would be a lovely background to anything, especially a dragonfly like we're going to do, which we'll be doing in pen and ink. So the first thing to do is you need to stretch your piece of paper ideally because if you don't stretch it, when you spray the water on it, which I'm going to do in a second, um, you'll find it will cockle up and that will be a problem. So then once it's dry and stretched and nice and tight, my first uh, stage is to spray lightly with water like that. And it doesn't matter where it goes. And here I've got two blues. I'm going to do this one in blue because blue is a very accommodating color and it doesn't demand too much from you or me. And this is cobalt blue and this is uh, Caribbean blue, which is a kind of uh, slightly muted down phthalo blue. So if you don't have Caribbean blue, um, you can either buy some or you can use phthalo, but be careful with phthalo because it's very powerful. Okay, so I've sprayed this uh, blue, these two blues with some water and uh, I'm just going to literally just drop them in, drop it in like that. I've got my paper on a board on an angle, about 30 degrees I think. And there's the Caribbean blue, sorry, there's the uh, cobalt blue. A bit more of that there. Maybe a bit more Caribbean there. And it's entirely up to you how much or how little. You can use other colours, of course. And then we want to encourage it to mix and mingle. And now what I'm doing is I'm just flicking some water onto the paper to encourage it to move a little bit. And when you're sort of happy with how much mixing has happened, you think, uh, you can sort of just leave it, put it flat again. So now I'm just going to drop a, a few splotches in like that. And then some splodges of um, cobalt blue. So there we are. That is going to be the background for your dragonfly. Okay, so this is the uh, dry painting now with the background that we did and it's dried really quite nicely a sort of marbled effect so that's really good and what we're going to do now is we're going to put a dragonfly on top of that and one way that you can do that is to um, go to if you have an iPad um, you can go to a picture on the iPad and you can uh, find something that you think you could trace like this which is quite a decent picture a botanical drawing and I don't think there's any problems about um, uh, what do you call it copyright or anything on this so then you can you can put a piece of draw, uh, tracing paper over the top of it and if you can freeze the screen then you can trace it directly from your iPad my iPad is out of the arc, so it doesn't really like me doing that very much. So sometimes if I need to do that, what I'll do is I'll print it out and then trace it. In this particular case, because I don't need to trace everything I do, although I do sometimes for quickness, but most of the time I do the drawing. So in this case, I have drawn the dragonfly outline here in ink, and I've drawn it on tracing paper. And the benefit of that is that now I can position it on my background wherever I uh, feel it's going to look best. Move it around and change the angle and so on. And that gives me an idea of where to most, uh, you know, most uh, effectively position it. So in order to transfer it onto here, I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to go over the back of it with graphite over the lines like this. I'm sure everyone knows about this trick, but just in case, you might have forgotten. 
So that makes this into carbon paper and then I can just position it wherever I want it. So I don't know, maybe we'll put it there. And then I use a sharp pencil, an HB or something like that. And then I can just trace over it with the pencil. And then that gives me lines underneath that I can follow for the next stage. So I'll just do that and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've now sketched the drawing in pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Stettler pigment liner. This is a 0 0.2, 0 0.2 millimeter. And I'm going to, first of all, initially just draw uh, the outline mostly. Okay, so we'll start with the eyes. I, when I sketch, I don't do just a single line. I, I like my sketching to be a little bit scrappy, a little bit um, broken lines, really. And uh, I don't know, this is a, just a personality thing. I know some people like to make all their lines really neat, neat and tidy and everything, but um, that's not... Uh, that's not the way I do it, but if you want to do it like that, then that's fine, of course. Okay, so the body is segmented. So as it goes down, each one of these little segments is going to be um, drawn in separate from the next one. And you just give it a little bit of shadow on one side, make each one slightly smaller than the one before and keep going with less detail as you get towards the end. And then there's a kind of V-shaped thing at the end there. There goes the printer. And the, the top line of the um, dragonfly wing has got a kind of indentation in it. So you kind of have a curve there like that. And then it comes round uh, another curve there. And then the top, this one goes underneath that one. So we go down then and we will put this one in. There's a little bit more darkness there, according to the drawing. And then it goes out, um, not quite so far as I've drawn it there. So I'll just rub that out. And it comes round in a kind of slightly pointy sort of way. And then comes down here and then out to draw to join that and then of course the one on the other side is the same little bit scrappy do there coming out giving a little bit of a curve and then back to where we started on the other side and then the same here you can be fairly free about this because it's a good idea to give the impression of movement I suppose that's what the, the scrunchy lines are about for me. That uh, it's a little bit more like movement if you have the lines a bit broken up. It's not very realistic, perhaps. Depends what you like. Okay. Right then, so now we've got our um, outline, basic outline on the background and you can see probably that there isn't very much more that needs to be done with this to turn it into quite a nice painting. And I'm going to go for a stronger version of the uh, blue in the background for the body. I'm just dropping it in, sort of broken up there. And then we're going to pull it out using sort of flicky strokes into the wings like that. And then the wing below, I'm going to do it in the other color. So this is the Caribbean blue or phthalo blue. And this side we're going to just do with a little bit of cobalt blue. 
going over the edges. Perhaps. And then I'm going to emphasize some of the darks using my Stettler uh, watercolor pencil, which will give me some nice dark lines because it runs when it hits the water, which is great for this particular kind of effect. As I said, that is a kind of here has kind of scratchy, it's quite a little bit dark. So we can put those lines in there. And then up here, there's also a little bit of darkness on that wing there, wing tip here. And then down here, we have the same kind of deal and here as well. So you just kind of put that in there using this magic pencil. And then we can come down here into this body and just really press quite hard and put some black down the side of the body there. And then he's got uh, his, uh, uh, now what are these? These are, these are not antennae, they are legs. I stand corrected on that one. And then the uh, eyes, which our eyes are a kind of browny sort of colour. Let me think, what shall I do them in? Um, let's do them in brown, a bit more realistic. So burnt sienna. I can make my brush pick up some paint. A little bit of burnt sienna there. So that is literally the only warm colour that we've put in there so far. And then I need some green, like this. And I'm going to put a little bit of that here, a little bit here. And let that dry. And you can play around as much as you like here. You can do whatever, really. It doesn't, uh, no rules to be broken here. And you know, you just want it nice and light. And then I'm going to rub out the extra lines that I don't need from my drawing. And then I think it's possible that it might look quite good if we do some spatter on there. So it would have to be in the same colour, I think, don't you? We would keep it in the blue range because that's all we've got. So I'm going to pick up some Caribbean blue, make that quite nice and wet. And I think it's probably a good idea to try it out. So I've got here, this was the background that I tried before I actually did this one. So yes, that's going to, that's going to work, isn't it? And if you get too many, or you feel like it might be too many, which it could be, you can always take a few of them out. But when they dry, it will be less anyway. So there we are. I'm going to let that dry. We'll come back to that in a second, and you'll see what you think. So there's the final painting. I've just added a few more little white uh, dashes using my white uh, Sigma pen, Sigma, Signo, Signo, Uniball Signo. Uh, just some highlights here along the, the body and on the top of the wings there. Um, but mainly the purpose of this uh, demonstration of Dragonfly was to show you how to do a very fluid and interesting background so very, very easily, provided that you stretch your paper first and you prepare it and then you will get the effect that you're after in just a few strokes and then just let it dry don't fiddle with it make sure you just put the paint on and leave it trust it to do its thing and it will and when it's completely dry and flat again then you can go in and you could put anything over the top of this a hummingbird or a flower or a bunch of flowers anything you like it makes a very good and very easy background to start with and if you mask out some of it before you start for example using masking fluid 
and then put the wash over the top of that. Then you've got some reserved whites where you can put your um, painting into. So we'll probably be exploring this a bit further as we go along. But anyway, give that a try. Stretch your paper, make it wet. Put, uh, start with blue because blue goes really easily into lovely washes without any nasty uh, colour clashes happening and you'll find that that will be quite effective. And then have a go at doing a dragonfly or something similar over the top of it. So good luck and happy painting and I'll see you again soon. So have a lovely evening and bye bye for now. Bye!